What's up guys, welcome back, another vlog. Good friend Zach White, he came out from Iowa, long trip just to visit us, so it's kinda cool. You've been watching the vlog for quite a few years now. Yep. We have a lot of customers who are interested in coming out and doing shop tours. We're happy to give shop tours and kinda show you around. A perfect opportunity today, because Zach's out here, we'll just film going through the shop and doing a whole tour with Zach. So now we are in the engine lab. As you can see, you got the dyno over here. It's an engine dyno, it's not a chassis dyno. There's chassis dynos out there that have little wheels down there. You put the car on top of, spin them up. You've probably seen those on YouTube or yep. in person. However, we're using this for something completely different. We're going through the break-in procedure for Duramax engines. So when we build a Duramax engine from the ground up, assembles it in here, and then it goes on the engine dyno. And then we have a program on there that goes through the break-in procedure. So it's a proper break-in procedure where you actually just hit run and it brings RPM up and then down and up and down and it oscillates it. It runs for about half an hour or so. Okay. And we have varying degrees of load that we put on the engine. So that properly and uh, scientifically, that's big a word. big word for me, <laughs> breaks in the engine. So in the past, mm -hmm. Jason over here. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Seriously, budget cuts are stuck with this guy. <laughs> so anyways, you have two different types of engine dynos out there, a gasoline dyno and then a diesel dyno. The diesel dyno only goes up to about 5,000 RPM. I think it's like 4,000 foot pounds of torque. You can run a gas engine on here. You're gonna be limited at 5,000 RPM. If we have a problem with the engine, we're catching it here versus being inside an engine bay. So is there like a baseline that you guys have to get to before it goes into an actual vehicle map out all the fuel flow rates we look at each individual injector we can turn injectors on and off as we're driving it on the dyno you can do it in the vehicle as well mm -hmm. but if you have an injector that's acting up that's a little bit off on the fuel flow rate it's so easy to change it out here it's literally like a couple minutes and you're mm -hmm. done gotcha. or a turbo is questionable um, if you have a lazy turbo because we do have a lot of new components going into these engines what happens if the manufacturer doesn't manufacture something correctly or there's a bearing going out or something like that, we're gonna see it when it's on the dyno. We put a heavy load on it and make sure that turbo's good. And it's making the fuel flow rates at load. A lot easier to fix it here than fixing okay. it in a truck. Oh yeah. Let's go to the offices. Is that, I guess it's just, office? it's just one office now, right? We should name this place the office. The office? Oh wait, that's been done. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have the same characters. <laughs> Yeah, so check this out. So this is a L39 Jetwing. It is a fighter trainer. And I went up to a friend's shop up in Napa Valley. He had like this little museum in his uh, airport hangar. Sherman tank in there. He had a couple Humvees, and that's why I was up there helping him out with some Humvee stuff. And he had like all these different like tracked vehicles from World War II. And then he had this like Jetwing on the side of the hangar. I'm like, what are you doing with that? And he's like, well, be honest, Ryan, I'm looking for the right buyer. And I was like, well, I'm looking for a conference table. And he's like, well, I just found the right buyer. There's a whole center section here that has, it's like, oh shoot, it's probably eight feet across here. And then the wings are attached to that. I cut that out. So we have the wings as a conference table. Um, I still have that center section. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Is the wing itself pretty heavy? This wing is probably 150 pounds. Oh. We, we did yeah, like this. Say, that's the heavy stuff, right? Kind there. of a fake landing gear on mm -hmm. it, which is kind of cool. Office is still kind of working process there. So you've been following the channel for quite a few years. Yeah, I Googled H2 Duramax conversion. I like the H1s, yeah. didn't think I could afford one, so I thought maybe I could afford a high mile H2 and possibly put the Duramax in. Yeah, 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 for sure. And your, your guys' YouTube channel come up from there. Every time a new one comes on, I'm watching it. That's cool, I definitely appreciate that. Oh yeah. That's yeah. awesome, and you're out here now. On the video, it seems a lot smaller. And you'd see like the two bays or whatever with the vehicles up, not realizing exactly where everything's sitting in it. Then you start piecing all the vlogs yeah, that you've yeah. seen. Am I shorter or taller in person? Uh, I'd say shorter. Yeah. yeah. I always make them look a lot taller. Sometimes when we're filming, like Paul and I, Jason has to position me like away from Paul because mm -hmm. I'm like half his size. Sounds good. So, got a wagon coming in right now. Wow, Tommy. Dude, you are always so loud. You always have the gun going or squeaky brakes. You are the loudest guy here. 
it's Tommy. So anyways, you had mentioned you're looking for an H2 Duramax truck. Yep. I have one of the first ones that we ever built. This was actually built in, I think, 2005 or four. And I believe we showcased this at SEMA in 2006. And at the time, the GM for the Hummer brand okay. was Susan Dockery. Susan Dockery and I are laying underneath the truck with our feet hanging out here. And she has this like team of engineers from General Motors because she was told they could not put a Duramax engine into the H2 Hummer. So she's like, this is ridiculous. Why did this company, Predator, put a Duramax engine in here mm -hmm. and we can't do it? And they're like, well, because you know, the production line would have to change a little bit and we'd have to change this and change that. The fit and finish from a production standpoint potentially have to create a whole nother production line. So let me pop up on the hood here. 18 years ago or so, we did this. Wow. We got a couple issues with it. Somebody put in these aftermarket Odyssey batteries, 300 cold cranking amps each battery, and being in cold weather too, this is not sufficient. You really need to have dual batteries that are running 800 cold cranking amps. That was causing some injector issues because what happens is these trucks are very fickle when it comes to voltage. When the voltage drops, the computers start to freak out and does some weird shifting stuff. And it was because of the voltage. So we'll get these guys replaced. This owner had this truck up for sale. It's a 94 H1, just a couple thousand miles on it. Virtually brand new. Nobody was buying it. And he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna take it back. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna turn this thing into my hunting rig, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Now I know a lot of peers are gonna be like, why would you ever do that? Well, he's enjoying life. So we did a Duramax conversion for him. We can do all these items, but we can't do all of this stuff. Gotcha. I said, cool, I'll do the conversion and then I'll uh, ship it out to me. I'll drive it around, I'll do the hunt. And then afterwards, I'll ship it back out to you. I'm like, all right, cool. After the hunt, we did a bunch of accessories on here. At the time we did rims and tires. What rims and tires are these? Oh, those are forged rims. Yeah, definitely extremely strong rims. A little dirty. Those haven't been seen completed. Or oh, they haven't? No. Oh. So yeah, we'll get a I'll vlog out on this it. truck. Yeah. Okay, yeah, rad. Okay, so that's coming, a later date. And so then he's like, hey, you know what? I want to redo the interior, set it back out here again. And we're doing the Alpha Dash in there. Uh, we'll release all that footage coming up here soon. Another cool truck. So check this out. 2006 H1 Alpha. So since this one didn't come with the Duramax, is it as easy to put into that as it is to an, a newer one because they have the Duramax? This uh, there's variations for sure. Okay. Between, there's more electronics on here. There's a lot less on here. As far as the conversion goes, we just adapted to every year. Every year has a couple a different nuances. Yep. For example, the CTIS pump on that one is a different location than that one. Does that under the hood then look, will look like an 06? No, it looks a little Still, bit different. Okay. It looks a little bit different. There's more electronics on this truck. For example, you have e-lockers on this truck. So there's a whole computer system for that where this one never had e-lockers on there. Gotcha. They have different fuse blocks on this truck than that one. Okay. We're also utilizing a completely different engine than this one. This is actually an LOY as the LBZ model year that we're using on all of our conversions, but also this has a five-speed transmission, not a six-speed. Six it's a big difference. Same transmission, different valve body on there. The different valve body allows for the six gear. Don't quote me on it, but I think it's like 0.62 or something like that. Final drive ratio is like 0.8, okay. something like that. So it's significant. You're dropping RPM from this truck to this truck by like 150, almost 200 RPM. Wow. And for all you purists out there on this Alpha, I know you guys are going to be questioning what we're doing to it. We are hacking the crap out of it. We're putting in all kinds of aftermarket Predator accessories, the ones that you guys don't want to see on a stock truck, which is fun. I know, they yell at us online. Sometimes they call me and like, so why'd you do that? Another H2 Duramax conversion. This one has a Rancho four inch lift. If you're into H2s and you're into lifted H2s, I wouldn't go to the six inch lift. I really like the four inch Rancho lift. That's my favorite. It drives like a factory truck. You get into the six inch ones, they're all over the place. Oh, they God. suck, it's all show. Where the four inch actually functions. It's actually a functional lift. If you can still get the Rancho four inch lift for an H2, comment below because I had a customer call up and said, hey, I can't get them anywhere. Do you have one? I'm like, nah, maybe 15 years ago I had one. <laughs> We put fab on this side of the building because we have really good ventilation back here. 
We've got a roll-up door over on one side, a roll-up door on the other side. And then we've got the whole row of fab cells here. So we are knocking out some rocker panel protection here. Start with flat plate over there on the uh, CNC high-def plasma table. So this is the heart and soul of the, the high-def plasma. So you can have multiple different gases that are actually going through the pore head. So the cut is extremely clean, not sharp at all and extremely precise. So you can go to laser, and that's one of the things I looked at doing was getting a laser in here, but the problem is just the sheer cost on a laser. To cut the thicker material that we're doing, you can only cut some of the material, not all the material. How many different thicknesses of material do you guys use? We'll run like eighth inch, quarter inch plate. We've got some perforated metal up there, some aluminum down here. But most everything is quarter inch. Sometimes we set down to 3 16 depending on what we're doing, where an application requires something that's kind of specialized. All of our material are long tubes inside this container. Joe's over there building up a Viper winch bumper. We also have a plasma tube notcher over here. Check this out. We load up a stick of material on here. And then this engraver comes in and engraves the start of the bend, the location of the bend, spins the material to different locations. So if we have like a compound bend where one, one bend's going this way, then the other side it's bending this way, it'll tell us where the start of the bend is and also throws down the degrees. Wow. That processes all of our tubing here. That's awesome. And you're probably having less scrap with it too. Definitely, most, definitely. Most of the material. Yeah. You can lay it out so that you have other parts that go into that stick of tubing. Yep. So it may not be for that specific kit that you're, you're cutting out and go to something else. Yep. That's awesome. I think the final thing is a press brake over here. So we have that whole underbody rocker panel protection. And the issues that we ran into is finding a press brake that is big enough to bend this. This guy does that. They're manufactured in the States. Really nice press brake. Throw in the part, hit the program number, and it bends everything to what you need to be. Nice. Yeah. You're from Iowa, correct? That I am. Have you ever had a California burrito? I've had an Iowa, California burrito. That is oh, not no. the same. Oh, whoa, yeah, whoa, it, no. whoa, 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 wait. So what was in your Iowa, California burrito? Uh, carne asada, cheese, french fries, pico de gallo, and guacamole. Uh, corn tortilla. Oh, are you, is corn tortilla? Uh, We're going to go get you a real California burrito. Yes. Perfect. Right, let's go. <laughs> um. <laughs> Don't be weird, Jason. <laughs> so is this the first time you're, you've been in a Hummer? Nope. It's pretty much identical to an H1, except for creature comforts. So 6.5 turbo diesel, not a ton of power, obviously. Want to drive around the block? Oh. Oh, you just made him nervous, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sign the disclaimer, I don't. Excited and nervous at the same time. How you feel, Wilson? Feeling great. <laughs> so, did you drive Humvees? Nope. Nope. The only thing that you have to be aware of is just the width. So, when you're driving these trucks, you're obviously it's wider than most vehicles. The other thing to consider too is you're sitting much further over to the side of the vehicle. So, your wheel placement, your tire placement going down the road, the position's a little bit different. So, the Duramax is get up and go a lot quicker? Yeah. So, the 6.5 turbo diesel is, is a great engine for 1999, 2000. But in today's driving, people, like just a normal vehicle has 300 horsepower. And it, it's just keeping up with that traffic where, that's, where this, this platform starts to falter a little bit. But again, it keeps up with everybody without any issues. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have no problems owning a 6.5 turbo diesel and enjoying it. really no issues at all. It, it does everything you need it to do. I mean, is it more fun getting up to 60 in like four to five seconds? Heck yeah, but do you need to get there that fast? No, not at all. What do you mean no, not at all? Yes, you when always need racing, to get there that fast. But I never break the law when it comes to speed ever. Jason has <laughs> rolled his car into multiple pieces. Yeah. In front of the car, Ripped back, in half. and then yeah. The engine was somewhere else. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's that good of a driver. I got hit by a drunk driver, asshole. Uh, but I was only going like 130 miles an hour, though. But. Holy. Did you get 
get a ticket for that? No, because I got hit by a drunk driver, so I got out of everything scot free. And so I got a bunch of money. You got a concussion. No, no, no. I was no, in no. a coma for a you month. You got a coma for a month. A month. That's what it yeah. was, yeah. Wow. Broke my you head and my back. Like, they probably felt bad for you. Yeah, pretty but much. They should feel bad for me now having to work with you. Yeah, that's, that's... And Zach, of course, for having to waste his day here. <laughs> that's the whole reason why Zach came out here was to see me. No way, dude. I talk to Zach all the time on YouTube. Oh, okay. See, told you. Did you change your, your uh, perspective now, Jason? A lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, rad day. Thanks for coming out, Zach. No problem. Thanks for having me. Cool to see. Like, we've been talking online for years now. Yep. You came out to visit us. So that's Finally, awesome. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. No problem. Appreciate thanks it. for having me. Yeah, definitely. Can you give us an outro, Zach? You've watched the vlog enough. Click subscribe, hit the notification, and don't forget the bell. Dude, even <laughs> he gets it. I this is ridiculous. Welcome to the vlog. My name is Ryan Wilson. <laughs> Done. I'm out of here. <laughs>